Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Monday. What's up, everybody? Monday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody has an amazing weekend as we are rolling into a brand new week, up about 12 points in the S&P. Uh, as we uh, popped into some supply areas in the overnight, but they based in front of it, and this is why we say basing before a level is the kiss of death. So we'll review that a little bit today. Really quick announcement. I know I've gotten a lot of requests recently to do another YouTube live session so that uh, people can ask questions. So on Wednesday evening, mark your calendar, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we will be doing a Traders Open Forum. So this open forum is designed for you to bring any questions you want uh, about the world of trading. We're going to take a look at what's happening in 2020. And how can I prepare for potential market movement? So I'm going to put a link to that. I'm going to pin the link to that in the comment section down below so that you have it. But don't miss that 7 p.m. Central, uh, 7 p.m. Central 2020 Traders Open Forum. All right, let's go ahead and dive in to our uh, next uh, into, into the day. So the S&P, uh, we are up about 12 points this morning. Now, we had a live trade room last night, and we were looking at this level as a potential reversal trade. Now, we looked at this level in both the S&P as well as the NASDAQ. Now, in the NASDAQ, we actually used the 15-minute um, level, and it was this little area right here. And so the the commentary last night was basically around the idea that this is not a Neither one of these are terrible levels, but whenever you're looking at these in a globex session, it, it it's always going to be slightly lower probability, right? And so what, what I did was, as we set this up last night, we put an alert right here, and the alert that we put in basically said, listen, the only way that I would consider getting short at this level in the Globex session is if it was a confirmation entry. And frankly, even then, I'm going to I'm gonna want to be awake when it hits. Um, so we set an alert yesterday at about this level right here at about 3276. And I woke up this morning and I get up pretty early. I, I you know, I get up about 430, 445 in the morning and I see that I got an alert a little after 2 a.m. Well, I was awake, or I wasn't awake, and so I did not enter this position. And so this is going to come as a shock to a lot of people, but I don't believe in the set it and forget it style of trading. Um, now, this very well still may work and come down right out of this level for a good move. And if it does, great. I have no problem saying that there's an opportunity to get short if we come out of this level and come below these lows. If you want to take a short at that point, go ahead. Um, I think that's actually not a bad little setup with very limited risk and low exposure. However, we're very close to the all-time high, right? And you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, and you don't short the all-time high. And that's kind of what I see as a potential risk factor here is trying to short against that all-time high and getting uh, and, and getting stopped out. And what you don't want to do is just keep getting these little tiny stop outs three, four, five in a row, because that's just, number one, it erodes your confidence, uh, and number two, it, it, it erodes your account size. So what I would say is to look for quality areas of demand to get long, and typically that's going to be breakout areas in a market like this. So, you know, we could break out a bit higher from where we are at this moment, um, you know, just looking at, at a potential on the breakout. Same thing in the S&P. The, S, the, the NASDAQ actually... Um, has been our stronger market. Now, we do have a little supply level here up above us in the NASDAQ. For those of you that are interested in a short, you do have a little supply level up here um, that I wouldn't be completely uh, crazy for, for, for taking a shot at, uh, partially because it's only seven points wide, right? It's a seven-point wide level. So if you take that on one or two contracts, you're risking a couple hundred bucks, um, and if there is some sort of a news and it pulls back. Now, why am I looking at, at shorts at all? What are some of the things that I'm noticing? Part of the reason that I'm taking a look at some of these shorts, at least to even consider, is, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but I'm going to pull it up, and I don't normally pull up individual stocks in the daily market commentary, but um, when we look at some of the components that make up the market, right? Apple, 
put in a doji on Friday. Um, Microsoft put in essentially a bearish engulfing gandle on Friday. Um, if I look at Facebook, put in a um, put in a spinning top on Friday. If I look at Google, put in a uh, put in a doji on Friday. So notice that all of these markets. Uh, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook. What, now, why did I go to those four particular? Well, those four make up about 40% of the overall NASDAQ's uh, market cap. So those four stocks represent about 40% represent about forty of the overall NASDAQ market cap. And I guess you could throw um, Amazon in there as well. Now, Amazon is already a bit weaker, but it's also put in it also put in a, a reversal candlestick pattern. My point is is that when I'm looking at at my major U.S. equities, I also want to pay attention to the components that make up those equities. And so, would I be completely shocked to see us pull back a little bit today? Absolutely not. And that's the only reason that I would consider some of these shorts. Now, remember, because we're in a bigger picture upward trend, it's still more of a confirmation style in anything that I would do unless I get a quality breakdown set up. And the breakdown is the only way otherwise to get in. Now, as far as demand goes, in the S&P, we do have some demand down below us still in that candle to candle kind of an area. And there's room to to, to, to make a little bit of hay as it comes back down into this area, if indeed it is able to do so. But I think you're better off looking for, for pullbacks, or excuse me, for breakouts uh, to the upside than you are waiting for that long pullback to come into play today. Let's go take a look at crude oil. So looking at crude, we had a, you know, we're overall just kind of trending down in crude. And last night we couldn't find any high quality levels. So we actually built a bear put spread in crude. Uh, and, and remember that you can always trade options on futures, options on futures. There's nothing wrong with trading options on futures. They give you a very unique opportunity and unique perspective. So I didn't see any quality levels to try to time an entry. You may get a little breakdown if you want to try a breakdown below here, provided we get some basing inside this region. Um, we need some more basing because we've got one touch, two touches. I need my third touch with a little bit of basing and we could have a breakdown. Um, or you could do the the bear. I think I think the one we looked at last night was like the the the, the 60 or maybe it was the 59 by 56 or something like that. It was a pretty good little bear call spread, a bear put spread if it's something you're interested in taking a look at. Uh, next would be gold, and inside gold, we identified an area for potential breakout to the upside. Now, on gold last week, on Friday, we had this triangle pattern, which did give us a nice little breakout to the upside. Uh, for those of you that were able to catch that triangle pattern breakout, and so now we're looking at another breakout above this area here, provided that we get some basing. Now, in the overnight, we did not get any of that basing, and our four-hour chart is kind of giving me a little meh. Um, we have, however, put in a lower swing high, right? So we have lower swing lows right here and lower swing highs by definition. So if we get below kind of this area in here, this tells me that this hourly demand level probably will have a hard time holding. And I would anticipate that we could get a breakdown below here provided we get the basing. Um, now, looking at that, I can kind of come up here and determine that you know, we may get a little bit of a reversal area right in here if you want to give that one a go as well. Uh, inside of our bonds and currency markets, so in the ZN, we had a little level that, uh, that, that hit on Friday, got a little move away from there. Our next level would be this confirmation short somewhere up in here. Um, but for now, the ZN just doesn't really give me a whole lot to do. And you're going to find that happens here pretty regularly on some of these others. Um, in the Aussie, we've, we, uh, we've got a little bit of a supply area up above us and a little 15-minute demand level below us where price can, can maybe lean on if we come back into this region. Um, this is probably the, the, the only quality level as far as the demand zones on this chart. But our four-hour has definitely you know, rallied back up. A nice little reversal in here would allow price to continue to run. Uh, in the euro, so in the euro, we've gotten some fairly wide levels. I took away some of the closer levels yesterday as we've gotten some fairly wide, uh, you know, spacing between the zones. And you're seeing this in a lot of currency markets. 
Canadian dollar as well. I don't have any zones really kind of right up in front of me. So a little breakout area below here, supply area at 76,818 uh, by 76,875. Uh, this is a little drop base drop supply area that could give you an opportunity if price comes up into that region. You know, we're kind of pinching here on all of these currency markets. Um, start, you know, you're kind of seeing a, a pattern here in, in this one specifically where you might see a, a little bit of a breakdown um, outside of this triangle. So if you wanted to, to play it, you know, you've got one, two, three, four, five touches, which make it a triangle pattern. However, my big picture trend direction is a little bit more inconclusive. And so uh, oftentimes on these, you'll get a breakout, but that breakout may just take us up into this reversal and then price come down. So understand that you can play the triangle pattern if you want to give that one a go on the Canadian dollar. Great British pound, Japanese yen. Um, we are pretty far from levels in both of those markets as well. And, uh, and when I take a look at the pound, you know, we we looked at this as a breakdown on a candle to candle short. So if you were in last night's live trade room, let me know in the comment section down below if you took our candle to candle short, getting short just below this blue line. Uh, that was the setup as far as your candle to candle. You've gotten a really nice run on your, your British pound candle to candle move. So at this point, take your stop. I would say move your stop down to down to here to lock in some of that profit because we may get another reversal at that area. And so lock in a little bit of that profit on that candle to candle short. Excuse me, not candle to candle. Uh, 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 it was a... Uh, uh, a gap, a gap and go play. That's what it is. Gap and go play, and then moving that stop down off that gap and go trade. And then the Japanese yen, same as well, gave you an opportunity for the gap and go trade on the Japanese yen. So both the Japanese yen and the Great British Pound last night gave us the gap and go setup, and both of them have gapped and gone. Um, so as far as today goes, if you got questions, please uh, join us on our on our open forum on Wednesday evening, um, YouTube Live. I'll like I said, I'll post the comment. I'll post the. Uh, I'll post the link in the comment section down below, and I'd love to have you join us. And please share it with friends. Let other people know about our YouTube live session on uh, on Wednesday evening so that they uh, also may partake. So that's all, everybody. If you have any questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. Until tomorrow, I'll talk to you soon. See you.